I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Benoit Laferriere, a.k.a. Nostradamus Ben. And uh, I'm host uh, this uh, episode with uh, my colleague, uh, Jonathan. How do you feel, Joe? Yes, I'm going great uh, today. So today, my friend, we have a special guest and... Uh, a former WWE and MMA talent, UFC yes, talent. Yes, and he is uh, also a, a UFC Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, this is uh, the ba- one of the baddest men on the planet. So, uh, we're going to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Dan, the Beast Severn. How are you, my friend, today? Well, I'm just uh, another beautiful day in the land of paradise. That's yeah. all I Yes. Uh, how was the weather in uh, Michigan? Well, I mean, uh, it's beautiful this morning. Okay. And uh, we're so happy... Uh, for uh, for accepting uh, our invitation, so we going forward with uh, some questions. So go ahead, my friend. Uh, okay, uh, you were a basketball player in high school. How did you get interested in uh, fighting sports, Mr. Severn? Well, it uh, came uh, actually in a very unusual way. Um, I How many hours and how many? This is, this is all back in 1992. 1992. Oh, it's a long time ago. 30 years ago, friend. And the United States was still in like a recessionary type of time period. And uh, literally, I had a job that I had a friend of mine, an attorney friend, he says, You need to, because you need to actually file for unemployment. You need to, I, I go, how? I've never, I've never done that in my life. And I have to see a flyer about a tough band contest. Okay. A tough band is, is three women around the boxing, or I think somewhat of boxing. It's just, tough band is you know, three rounds of, of just anything that was closed inside of a ring. And the first prize was $1,000, and yours truly needed a thousand dollars and I showed up and I'll simply say that newfound skills were acquired. Wow. And um, <clears throat> in this area that was very different than uh, today because in the UFC 
uh, in the past, uh, there there is not uh, there is no uh, categories of weight. Oh, yeah, so of uh, I remember that a, uh, for example, uh, a, a karateka of uh, 150 pounds uh, fight it with uh, fought with a, uh, a sumo fighter at that uh, 400 pound and uh, like the movie Bloodsport. Yeah, yeah. it's what the <coughs> you yeah, fight. That was, that was Keith Hackney versus uh, Andy Arbro. There was over there was over a 400 pound weight difference. Wow, man. Uh, so you uh, you will uh, you you fought for your uh, for your uh, own life, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, uh, oh, well, I, 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 I have one book out already, and it's an okay book. Mm -hmm. but I, I book number two. I want to recommend to the readers by the throat and choke slam them because they're going to realize you know there's a lot of people that uh, can claim a lot of things. You know, I actually have facts. <laughs> I got figures. I lived it. <laughs> I, I, I'm here to tell the story now that uh, there's when you when you walk into a cage and you know that I can't lose and I can't get hurt because I have no health insurance. Wow. You know, see, in the United States, unlike Canada, where it, well, again, I, I should say. <laughs> The United States has changed it quite a bit here uh, in the, the last few years. So uh, I'll, try, I'll try to stay away from politics because politics makes you enemies of everybody. But, uh, you know, there's a, there's a really bad disease going around. It's not called COVID. It's called dumbassitis. That's what's, uh, that's what's going across the entire world. Dumbassitis, and it's quite contagious. And uh, in the UFC, uh, who was your toughest opponent, uh, Mr. Severn? Well, it, it would be it would be another wrestler because I that was my my strongest suit was my grappler background. Okay. One of the things I want you to point out point out there, to you that out of a twenty year career, I only ever did two training camps in twenty years. Now think about that. On UFC number five, I took out 32 days of my life to train. And then for the ultimate, ultimate, I took out 35 days. The rest of the time, I just showed up and did matches. Now, when you think about this only, again, here's one of the bragging rights that I have. The bragging right is there are only four people in the world that have over 100 cage fights. I've won wow. the four. There's only three people in the world that have over 100 victories. I'm one of the three there. Wow. But the real ironic part is I faced the other three. I defeated the other three. And the closest one to my age is 12 years my junior, younger than me. Oh. So got, <laughs> what an accomplishment. Talk about this, talk about that, I go, I'll believe it if you can show me. I, I've got, I've got those. Those are hard facts. Those are just hard facts. And and and, and also the fact that I'm lifetime chemical free. Wow. You, you you do a you do a podcast called uh, Wrestle Wrestle Rock, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. We you are on Wrestle Rock. You, you, yes, and, and so you interview uh, probably a number of professional. Wrestlers. Yes, exactly. Uh, we are in the, the <clears throat> in the past. Uh, we wrestled uh, in professional wrestling for over uh, 12 years, and now we are retired. But uh, uh, we know you uh, by the by by, by the side of uh, the uh, the Attitude Era because you uh, you were involved in uh, the the WWE. <clears throat> but uh, if we uh, search uh, um, in the past, you uh, you accomplish a lot of uh, uh, impressed uh, things, and we are so uh, excited to uh, to learn you about that. So, how the transitions uh, between the UFC? Being about being, being about being a 
be in this battle with the NWA, National Wrestling Alliance. I mean, that was my first real case with it. I mean, I started my professional wrestling career back in 1992. And is what I started my professional wrestling career in 1992 because of what happened. I started a fighting career. I started a professional wrestling career. And by 1994, I jumped into, into the UFC because that's what that finally interested as well. So again, you know, necessity, I had to keep a roof over my family's head and I had to keep food on the table. And I, as I used to tell people, because a lot of people, they would ask me when I would go on, get on an airplane or something like that, they look at me like going, well, you're a good sized fellow. They're like, uh, do I get an athlete? And I go, I said, well, yes, I am. I go, I make money the old fashioned way. And they're like, well, how's that? I beat people up and I take it. Okay, Mr. Severn, in 1995, you wrestled against uh, the late Chris Canido for the, the NWA world title. How do you feel after this wonderful accomplishment? Well, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm fully impressed with what Jim Cornette allowed me to do. And he and, he and I had never met prior to that. I mean, when you think about that, because you, okay, you, 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 both you guys are men in the industry. Think about this. Somebody at the NWA thought of, I came up with the idea of wanting to put the strap on me. Someone had to reach out to Jim Cornette to simply say, and he's running his, his organization known as Smokey Mountain Wrestling, and say, hey, Jim, we would like Dan Seven to come into your organization. And to beat Chris Candido and walk away with the NWA belt. I mean, think about that. I mean, that, how many promoters, how many promoters will went along with that idea? I know they had to explain uh, quite a bit as to who I am to Jim at the time, but I give Jim a great deal of credit for taking that sort of a risk with me. Because it was, it was a gamble on his, on his, on his Yeah, and Jim Cornette was very visionary. Yeah. I, I, you know, it paid off really big because I had the, I had the NWA belt carried out a big name. to UFC number, uh, UFC number five, uh, with uh, Dennis Carluzzo, a, a professional promoter out of uh, New Jersey. He carried the belt out to the uh, octagon cage. And I proceeded to win UFC number five, and and inside the Oscar cage held up both a professional wrestling title belt along with the UFC title belt. The first time in history. Wow! And uh, when you um, you were involved in uh, WWF, uh, what is your opinion about uh, the merch? Uh, with uh, wrestlers and boxing, we remember that. Uh, brawl, uh, there was a, a brawl for all tournament. What is your opinion about uh, this uh, tournament? Well, the, the, my, my opinion on the whole brawl for all concept was it was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. And, 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 again, and proved to be exactly that. Now, ironically, we have to be at a, if I say we, uh, I was on tour with the WWF at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I was not exclusive to the W, it was known as WWF at the time, now known as WWE. I was non exclusive, meaning that I could mm -hmm. work for WWF, but then I could work for the NWA. Okay, in the and same time. For anybody else that would want to contract me. So I had a very unique contract, but I, I, I just, I tell people that, I go, I'm not the type of person that's going to, you know, take a belt and then throw it into the, in the trash or something like that, or try to defeat anybody. I go, I'm there just to look out for what's best for Dan Severn is what I'm, I'm looking for. So, you know, Gary, what was your original question? I, I kind of went off a little bit of a tangent because I wanted want to make that point. Okay, uh, in the in the province of Quebec, we have a fantastic MMA athlete uh, called uh, George Saint Pierre, aka GSP. We would like to hear yeah. about GSP. Yes, no, I I know George Pierre. He's a, uh, a great guy. Uh, 
great athlete. Okay, okay. So you 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 don't know him personally. No, I, I've never I, I've never met him before. Okay. Uh, I've watched I've watched some of his matches in the uh, Ultimate Fighting Championship. I like the way that he conducted himself mm-hmm. because there's, there's a lot of guys that they're just trash talkers. <laughs> and George St. Pierre was not a trash talker. And yeah. Is a good arts, athlete with a. What 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 are what are the martial arts all about? The martial arts are supposed to teach you things about honor yeah. and respect and not to do some of the things that they're doing to another fallen opponent. I mean, what I, what I, what, what disgusts me a great deal about today's MMA competitor is you knock somebody basically out on the feet. They're falling down and it, they hit, they hit them, they hit them that, that uh, hard and then they pounce on top of them. And they will deliver another four, five, or six punches before that referee will pull them off of them. To me, there is something admirable about what they're doing. There is something about martial arts even being incorporated into this because it's, it's thuggery. To me, you, you, if you if you ever watch any of my matches, I was probably the nicest guy in the world. Never punishing anyone more than they have to be to win a match. Okay, okay. okay. And uh, uh, can you talk about the story of the late Owen Hart and his botching an inverted pile driver on you? We remember that Stone Cold received the same treatment as you uh, at SummerSlam 1997. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, obviously, you know, he is involved in the wacky world of There's a basically storyline mm-hmm. that the wrestlers are, are, are adhering to. Okay, that, so, that that was a storyline. Okay, perfect. So uh, we we uh, we think that it he, he injured you for real. So uh, we're we're so no, happy. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah, KFB yeah, was good. Said, the the KFB was, was good. The storyline that he was going to do this tubso pile driver to me, but I mean he wasn't supposed to do it for real. It is professional wrestling. Yeah. And the one thing that I always tell people there, because I always travel with at the, at the NWA belt and a UFC title belt, mm-hmm. because it's history that I travel with. Okay. And I always tell people that, uh, you know, being a professional wrestler, you are supposed to be a trained professional. I have been hurt far worse in professional wrestling That I have been in all of my cage fights combined. That's that's sad when I say that, but again, that tells you: Are these professional wrestlers? Do they continue to hold their skills, uh-huh. or do they think that the ones that they that they may train that they're good to go? No, they're not. You are only as good as what you continue to hold your skills. Yeah, and then also you got to look at. Are they on any kind of uh, chemical, mm-hmm. chemical cocktails or uh, party favors, whatever else have you? Right there, if you, if you guys have been involved in the industry. There's a lot. There's a lot of chemicals inside professional wrestling. Yeah, and I, I always tell people I have outlived. I have outlived six of my cage fighting opponents, and I had over 30 of my professional wrestling partners and that's sad and uh it should not happen these are all been these are all been that are way younger than what i am is it uh, one of your uh, the reason that you are uh, leaving the wwe company uh, say that, say again. uh what are you leaving the wwe is it one of the 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 reason that you leave uh, the wwe
okay. And, and, uh, he, and he even made the comment. He goes, he goes, you know what kind of money you can make doing this? And I go, that's not why I'm here. I go, I, I, that's, again, that's one of the sad things about professional wrestling. When you really look at a lot of the wrestlers, what are their real skill sets? Okay. Professional wrestling, what can a lot of professional wrestlers do outside of just wrestle? And I always tell people that you better have four options if you really want to succeed in life. And that's one of the things that I, I also do is I travel around the country and make do doing speaking engagements because, you know, especially at my age that I am here still, mm-hmm. I mean, I, the fact that I started my amateur wrestling career back in seventh grade, 1969, I've competed in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, wow. 2020 plus. I mean, how many people can say that they've competed in six different decades and they're still alive? And they're still moving. <laughs> Nobody accepted the beast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mr. Severn, what was your reaction when you found out that you uh, will be inducted in the UFC Hall of Fame? Well, I was very happy when I found out that Well, uh, we lose Mr. Severn, but um, thank you for your time, Mr. Severn. Uh, we so appreciate much. Uh, so much uh, your time. Uh, we know that. Uh, oh, he called me back. Oh, he called me back. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, sorry about that. I ended up in the bad area. I, I no problem. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we know that you are on the road right now, and this is very appreciated that we uh, we talk all together. So, uh, my friend Benoit. Yeah, I, re- I will repeat the, the question. Uh, what was y- your reaction, Mr. Severn, when you found out that you will, will be inducted in the UFC Hall of Fame? Well, I, mean, I was uh, I, obviously I'm happy about that. Uh, you know, being recognized by a company, being recognized by. Uh, it appears, I, I'm not even sure who was the, the, the committee in the first place to say who is in and who is not in, but uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, I was inducted. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I, you know, another aspect is I, I, I am in either, I have either 30, 20 or 30 professionals about and inducted into 20 or 30 Hall of Fames or CMO mm-hmm. Round. Yeah. 2030 Hall of Fames and, and, uh, and the 20 professionals. So, I mean, it, it's, uh, I always tell people when I get old enough and I, I, I want to slow down, I will actually recount everything and I'll have a very accurate number. Otherwise, I just keep picking up dates. You know, I, I just get it, 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 it into the International Professionals in Hall of Fame. Just, uh, Uh, left than a month and a half ago, back in New York. Yeah, and uh, for uh, ending, as uh, usual, uh, my partner Benoit, aka uh, Nastradamus Ben, uh, will try to predict your future. So uh, go ahead, my friend. Okay, Mr. S- Severn, everybody knows that you're, uh, you are uh, in the UFC Hall of Fame. All of, all, yeah. And uh, eventually you will be inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame. In a few years. Well, I, I don't I don't know if I will be. I mean, it, it's hard to say. I, mean, I don't know who's on the selection committee. Should I be involved? Should I be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? Yes. Based on who I am, what I've accomplished, I should be. Now, granted, granted while I was in, uh, employed by them, uh, they did not utilize me to... Uh, to that, all that great of a, a, a benefit to them. But again, you know, I was relatively still new to the professional industry and did not know how much I could speak to them about creativity, ideas of that. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, that, that they've been a machine that's been uh, in operation, a business that's been, uh, has been in operation for so many years that they would have better ideas. Well, obviously, 
you know, when a Brock Lesnar came along, mm-hmm. you know, they utilized him way better than what they utilized me. Mm-hmm. I know. So, uh, for ending, uh, thank you uh, so much for your time and your uh, availability uh, with us. This is a pleasure and honor. Uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, be careful on the road uh, because you are on uh, on the car. And uh, take care, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Severn. Oh. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Mr. Severn. <laughs>